Hey everybody, welcome to the Healthy SBC Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Sutton. Uh, I'm here with the officially, unofficially retired Sonic guy, Paul Reeser. Absolutely, the and artist formerly known as. There, yeah, the artist, I love that, I love that. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about um, a little bit of his history, um, how it's going to help uh, shreveport Bossier City be healthy in, in all kinds of different ways, and uh, just getting to know him. So super easy, uh, Paul, What's what do you do, who are you, and what do you do as a retired entrepreneur? Well, it's interesting. Well, I guess it's not that interesting, but uh, so my name's Paul Reeser. I used to be partners with my five brothers and sisters owning 38 Sonic Drive-Ins across the South. Um, we sold all those two and a half years ago, so now I'm the artist formerly known as the Sonic Guy because everyone just said, "Oh, you're the Sonic Guy." So now uh, I don't know. I'm not the Sonic Guy anymore, but people still seem to talk to me about Sonic all the yeah. time. So it was it was a big part of my life for 30 years. So. A heck of a deal. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's funny when I when I Google Paul Reeser or whatever, which I, I do because I like to get some background information, even though I've known you for a long Google time. Google Paul Reeser. <laughs> Google yeah, is like, it's the Sonic guy. And That's I was right. like, he's holding a hot dog. Not really, but um, I love that. And, so if you're yeah. watching this, actually, this one piece of art behind me is uh, Vanica Art, uh-huh. local, yeah. really good artist. And I bought this when she was, you know, not super, uh, not as successful. She was just getting yeah. started. And uh, in our old office, we had like three Vanica uh-huh. commissioned. Wow. And then we all kind of had to fight over who got to take the art when we sold the office. And so I you won, won this one? I won the hot dog. <clears throat> was it like, so I, I listened to another podcast you're on, uh, The Uncommon Success with Andy Coates. Mm-hmm. And you talked about uh, putting the corn dogs in. And so did right. you like use a corn dog stick to, to fight <laughs> over this one? <laughs> It was, uh, it was, it was, we drew lots. Okay, good. So there was, there was four of us that wanted pictures. There was three pictures. So I'm like, okay, I'll just put the name of the three pictures in uh-huh. and one blank piece of paper in. So we all drew out a piece of paper and one person got nothing. Oh, I got the man. hot dog. Somebody else, you know. <laughs> oh, goodness. So they're all winners. I mean, I good. think I paid 5000 for this and it's probably supposed to be worth many times that now. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I uh, actually follow her on Facebook, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I didn't realize it was a local artist. That's, that's really cool. So I, She's cool. You already taught me something. You Sweet. should go interview her. Oh, absolutely will. Absolutely will. Actually, so she lives in Dallas now. She lives in Dallas. Well, we I can digress. Do I digress. Oh, well. We'll talk to her anyway. So why is it important for it's you good-looking hot dog, though. to do it? It is a good-looking hot dog. I mean, I don't particularly love hot dogs. I mean, I do will eat one, <laughs> but I think that one I could eat yeah, and be super happy. Dog. Yeah, well, yeah. that's even better. Why, why is it important for you do, to do the things that you do? I mean, you're, I know you're semi, you're retired or whatever. You're not really, but you're still doing mm-hmm. videos and podcasts and all that stuff, and you help with the community. Why is it important to do all that? Well, I retired from Sonic, right? But I just call it a pivot to something else. Yeah. But uh, the good news is, I don't worry about twelve hundred employees. I don't worry about paying bank notes back. I don't worry about upset customers or employees or all the things that can that can really stress you out when you own a business. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do want to do something, right? And so uh, this has afforded me the opportunity to be able to, right now I'm just trying a lot of things. Now, I'm involved in a lot of things because I love the community. I love my church. I'm very involved in the Simple Church. Right. Uh, I'm involved a little bit with LSUS School of Business, uh, the Committee of 100, which does a lot of economic development and, and promotion of Shreveport. And other than that, I just play around with, I, I built some houses. I, I'm tasting a lot of I things right now, Jeremy. Yeah. yeah. But it's important to stay active. Uh, because there's a big void when you work 50 hours a week for 40 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, well, who am I? You know, right. who am I now? And I'm trying to figure that out. I'm still the Sonic guy, apparently, because you're, you know, when you Google me, that's it. That's me. <laughs> um, but you know, you have to fill that void with purpose. Right. And my purpose right now is, is giving back. You know, a lot of people ask for my advice. <laughs> they don't necessarily take it, which is probably smart. Uh, but it's an option. But I just have an opportunity. One, you, you have to stay active. You have to stay, try to stay relevant. I'm learning. I'm still learning and growing and, and getting involved in a lot of things. Um, and I'm just trying to give back because I've been so blessed. It's yeah. important for me to try to help others along the road because yeah. I've been helped a lot. I love that. You know, we, we, um, we're members at Broadmoor Baptist. And one of the things, we've been there about two years. And one of the things that I've loved is they're so outwardly focused on mm. the community because we know you can, we can get inwardly focused on yeah. things that we're doing and we take care of our own people. And that's great. We should take care of our family and our friends mm-hmm. and our church members. But if we're not going out and serving, then it's, it's really for it's nothing. It's a great system. It, it is anti, I mean, it's, 
it doesn't seem logical that you're actually helping yourself by helping others. Yes. Uh, and you shouldn't do it because you're going to help others, right. but it all comes back to you. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, serving other people is the best way to influence people and the best way to get leadership in business and everything right. else is to have influence and the best way to influence people is to serve them. Yeah. So it comes back. A hundred percent. So we're going to get off on a tangent because you just brought something up. But So we, um, Broadmoor is in, involved in a ministry in um, Fort Worth where there's legal refugees from 37 countries. And so... They're, they're legally, they had to leave their country because they were getting killed or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we actually, they've been going out there for years, but we went and took our kids um, about three months ago. Well, I think at Christmas time. Wow. And and it's like you're in a different country. Even though you're mm -hmm. in Fort Worth, you're at yeah. this giant apartment complex mm -hmm. and everybody's dressed how they would normally dress, but they, they have nothing. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> we're taking rice and, and sugar and things like that and just introducing them to um, people who actually love and serve them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just, we wanted to get the kids involved in that because... Would you like me to get you some water? No, I'm good. I just want to choke. <laughs> uh, You're just what? choking up. I'm just going to choke. We wanted to get the kids involved because I want them to see early on that serving is something that should be part of your life. Um, because it's it's selfless. Yeah. It, it should be selfless. Hopefully it is. Yeah. So I love that. Um, good. What... Um, what made you, I think I already know the answer to this question, but what made you choose your career path as first going into the Sonic and now the things that you're doing now? Um, <clears throat> you know, I think we're going to get deep into some stuff here in a minute, but, uh, the, you know, the reason I chose my career path initially, uh, my degree is in video production. Okay. I didn't University know that. of Louisiana Monroe. Okay. And the night I took, but I grew up flipping hamburgers. Yeah. And I was really good at it. <laughs> and I was uh, I was assistant manager at, at different Sonics for all through college. But when I graduated, man, I was going to go make movies. And uh, the night I graduated, I mean, the night I took my final final, my wife informed me uh, we were expecting our first child. She said, make room for Jake. I'm like, Jake. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we're going to name our child Jake if we have a son. So uh, necessity of, I needed, a, I said, well, I got to go. I had been interviewing with different people, uh, and the the creative jobs were not paying very much. Right. The sales job was going to pay well, mm -hmm. but I had a very particular set of skills, a set of skills which I had honed over a lifetime of flipping hamburgers. <laughs> right. And I knew that if I went back into running a drive-in, that I would make enough money to be able to support my family and then this growing family that I had. So kind of necessity of the way that I could make the most money. Right. Is what drove me into Sonic. Yeah. Now, what drove me into growing the business and partnering with my brothers and sisters was I realized that it really doesn't matter what you do. There's always people around. Yeah. You know, you're always going to be, you, you need to make, you need to maximize your business. You need to take care of the people that look are up to you. They all, you got all these employees and they expect you to like make good decisions and help them get paid. Right. So there was a lot of responsibility in that, and then I found a lot of joy in being successful in that. So uh, it doesn't matter what you do. There's always going to be bad days or good days. I know people that work in television stations, which I really wanted to do, and right. they just have bad days. Yeah, They're like, I wish I would. I wish I owned some hamburger stands. I said, I wish <laughs> right. I worked in a TV station. And so you're always looking to that other side. Right. Uh, but what I finally found out was, man, do everything you can with what you're doing. Right. And it doesn't look very glamorous when you're 18, assistant manager at Sonic with mustard on your shoes, <laughs> uh, or even when you're 28, managing a drive-in with mustard on your shoes. Uh, but all of a sudden, once you own a couple, people are like, oh, I want to be you. Right. I'm like, yeah, but you didn't do see you want to be 18 and <laughs> working you know, nights, sure. coming home and your wife makes you leave all the clothes in the garage because you smell like a hamburger. <laughs> uh, but anyway... The point is, there's good and bad with every job, and what made me choose my career was I had I had the opportunity at that time. This is that was going to make me the most money. I saw a future in it. I knew that if I got into the business, I I knew that I could um, grow that business. I knew I would get a chance to buy in. I knew I would get a chance to grow. You know, I, I foresaw all this in my 22 year old self. Well, actually, I was 25 by the time we had a baby coming. Wow. So anyway, yeah, no, I like that. And I, I think, I don't remember if you told me this, we, we did a podcast a couple, few years ago and I think it was, I don't know if it was you or your dad said he'd like leave school when he was eight and go get a job or something like that. Oh yeah. My dad was very <laughs> clever. Uh, he was, the, he was the, the seventh of eight kids, very, uh -huh. very poor. And he always, he said, the way I'm going to get out of being poor is to get into business. So I definitely right. grew up with an entrepreneurial example. Right. 
And so he, I was like, from an early age, his dad would give him a quarter for lunch. That's what it was. But he worked out a deal with a restaurant down the street from the school. He would get off of campus at lunchtime, go eat for free, and then wash dishes and keep the quarter. <laughs> Eight years old, he That's made amazing. this thing happen. Yeah, you know, and I thought he was lying, and then I see all these old pictures, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> bought his first car when he was 13. Wow, he That's... wasn't legally driving it, but he had it. Laws were laws were really suggestive. They were flexible back then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think my dad used to tell me some of the stories of things he did when he was a teenager, and I was like, I would still be in prison now if I did that in the you know late 90s. So, <laughs> um, what what's your favorite aspect of what you're doing now? Well, I'm thankful every single day. I mean, I'm thankful, so thankful for um, the business that we had and that we had this successful exit, which allows me the opportunity, just this freedom to try all the things that I always wanted to try. Now, that can become challenging because without focus, my mind is a little bit scattered. Right. So um, I have been able to, you know, I built the houses, which was great. I finally sold two. I, I still have three lots left. I've built and sold two houses, which was fun. But that's not my, I realize that's not what I want right. to do. Um, I, I My favorite thing is being able to have coffee in the morning with my wife on the patio for Absolutely. a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> but yeah, just, just that freedom uh, to be able to do things like this. You're like, hey, when are you free? I'm like, Phew. I'm free three days next week. <laughs> what are you free? Yeah. Yeah. So come on. Good. I love that. You know, talking about building houses. So last year, or really I've always had this desire to do real estate. And uh, last so last year I joined the Bigger Pockets podcast. Oh, yeah. I downloaded, I paid $100 for the year, downloaded every book they have. Mm -hmm. I made it through about 10 of them. And I, and I love the information. But then I started to realize, like, I don't really want to manage properties. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to pay somebody else to manage properties. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, this is, I'll, I'm at the point in my life where I don't want to buy any more, um, I want to buy assets. I don't want any more, you know, things that are hurting yeah. me. Yeah. And my brain has stopped on what the word is for it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I was like, I, I don't think that's going to be my asset of choice is realty. Yeah. And, I, and that's mm -hmm. okay. But, but we all have to figure out where we fit in in the world. Well, I loved commercial real estate we built. We I loved building Sonics. We'd find mm -hmm. a great location, make a deal with, you know, build. And sometimes it would take years to find it. It took us three years to get to secure the Benton location. Wow. Um, for a lot of reasons. Well, while, but while I'm working on that one, we're also working on two right. in Alabama and one, yeah. in, you know. So you've always got something happening. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's just what I have found is that when my focus is split, I'm not as successful. Right. If I had to do it, that Real estate is, is remarkable. Yeah. Uh, but it is a challenge in that you never know, um, you know, if your folks are interested in real estate. So, you know, Dave Ramsey, you yeah. Dave Ramsey yeah. fan? Oh, yeah. Okay. Dave Ramsey's like, never borrow money, right. yes. pay cash right. for everything, right. you know, oh, to an extreme. Yeah. And I could debate some of those thoughts. I mean, we definitely borrowed money to build all our songs. Sure. But um, the reason he's like that is because he went bankrupt. Right. Absolutely. Because he was, he was flipping all these houses. Uh, with ninety day notes, yeah. So you borrow, you borrow all the money. You say you borrow a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand for a house, and you put it on a twenty year amortization. But in ninety days, you've got to pay it all off or borrow it again. Right. So what was happening was when he started, it was great. Right. It was like it was four years ago yeah. in the real estate business here in America today, and uh, he got so extended, and then all of a sudden, the real estate market unexpectedly, it's always unexpected. That's right. <laughs> went bad, and the banks said, No, I'm not going to give you 90 days again. You have to pay all the money back. And he lost all his houses, lost yeah. all his money, went bankrupt. Yeah. So he's telling you from experience, he touched a hot stove, and he's like, Don't touch that stove. Yeah. Well, when I got into the real estate this time, um, I wanted to buy and flip, I wanted to build spec houses. But I knew from Dave Ramsey and from like, even though the interest rates had been two and a half percent for the last 15 years, I'm like, these things and this housing market, people were paying cash above asking for every house on the market. You know, I mean, the market was crazy. This was right going into COVID. I'm like, okay. Or actually it was in the middle of COVID because we sold that. We sold the Sonics. Um, so I'm like, man, interest rates are low. I mean, even if they start to creep up, I've got time. I did have a, I knew though, worst case scenario, I could pay for the houses. Because what you can do is you can pay interest only for as mm -hmm. many years as you want, or maybe I can. While we're building those houses, the cost of building went up, you know, right. exponentially. Yeah. Lumber, copper, I everything. Mean, the cost crazy. of building these houses was unsurmountable. And also simultaneously, 
interest rates went up seven times. Yeah. So it went from people being able to get a 2.75% house mortgage to having to get a 7% house mortgage by the time I finished. The worst possible thing that could happen happened. Mm -hmm. These very expensive houses, nobody was buying houses. And I could have been in a horrible shape if I wouldn't have been careful. If I hadn't known that I had the, the resources to cover that, I could have lost my retirement that I've been <laughs> right. working 30 years for. <laughs> right. You just threw it out the window. You know, so when people say be careful, you have to be careful. The good thing about being older, 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 yes, not old, is uh, I have seen these cycles. And even though it's 12 years of low interest and everything's great, I knew in a heartbeat it could flip. Now, this is unprecedented. Mm hmm but luckily, I'm not saying I'm the smartest guy in the world, but I knew I better have some, you know, I better be able to cover these houses. Now, thankfully, I finally just sold the second one. I'm out from under that completely. Right. It was, a, it was a good, it was fine for me because I was able to cover it. Right. But too many people get themselves extended. Yeah. So I like businesses. I like buying businesses. I like that they generate cash. Um, it's really weird not to have any businesses because I'm not bringing in, I'm not bringing in dividends. I'm not bringing in rent. Right. All my money is in the stock market and in some, you know, stocks and bonds and yeah. you know, those things that you're supposed to put your money in <laughs> right. when you retire. I put those in at an all time high right after we sold our business for an all time high and the stock market crashed. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> these things happen. Yeah. But if you're, you just have to be aware that they can happen. And what happens is, is, if you are young and you go from from the time you're 18 to the time you're 30 and you only see good times, you can get yourself in a real bind. Um, luckily for me, I've I've learned, I've seen people do bad things. I've done, I've made a few mistakes myself, and so I was able to only do what I could afford to do. Yeah, I thought the man. So, so be careful. Be Just careful. be careful. Yeah. Be careful. Sweat equity is better than equity if you if you're young. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you get somebody else to put the money up for it and all you got to do is, is hammer the nails, that's pretty good. Absolutely. I think, I mean, that's great advice. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't overextend yourself further than what you can allow. And, yeah. Because uh, bad things can happen. Bad I mean, they can, can and they will, happen. And they will happen. Too. Seven interest rates increases in one year? <laughs> yeah. Never. I know it. Never happened. So I think something that you're good at, and I don't know if you agree, but I, I think you are. Is, you might is, want to edit the heck out of it. That was yeah, a long I mean, rant. That's okay. That's okay. It's, it's not cautionary it's, tale, people. It is not coming out. It's staying in there. <laughs> what? How important do you think it is to build a personal brand? Well, I think right now the term personal brand has a has a new meaning. Okay. So when you say personal brand, you're thinking Gary Vaynerchuk. Right. You're thinking social media. You're saying I need to be. Uh, I need to have a presence on media so that people are aware of who I am mm -hmm. so I can sell things. And that is interesting. Okay. I mean, it is a great way uh, for people to be able to sell things. But I, when I think of personal brand, I still think of good old-fashioned reputation. So when you say how important is, is personal brand, I say it is the ultimate of importance. Yeah. Because your personal brand, when someone says, when Jeremy Sutton rings my phone, I'm like, Oh, Jeremy, what's he want? You know, yeah. hey, hey, Jeremy, I'm yeah. going to answer. Sure. If I can help you, I'm going to try because I know you're a good character. You do what you say you're going to do. You're a good Christian guy, somebody I can <laughs> count on. You have a great personal brand with me. Right. You know, um, my personal brand, if I wanted to go start another business of 30 years of paying back, my dad, my dad taught me when I was very young, most important thing is like pay your banker first. If there's anything left over, eat. Right. Wow. It is of ultimate importance that you pay back your banker. Okay. So because of credit, because of successes, because of, you know, my character that people are, can take me for, I could go start another business. I could get a lot of people to rally around me. Many, many more people than ever they care, could care less of my 3,500 followers on Facebook. <laughs> Absolutely. Or YouTube or whatever, or YouTube, you know. Yeah. That social media presence does not mean near as much as my uh, character. Yeah. No, I 100% agree. My and, reputation. Yeah. And it, and it is it is your reputation. It's who you are. Mm -hmm. it, it is you. And so I, all the time, so I, for a long time when I was doing self-publishing or helping mm -hmm. people self-publish, I was big on LinkedIn. And I was like, okay, I'm trying to get all these bigger connections, which is great. 
Incredibly mm-hmm. powerful and important, but yeah, I'm but sorry, I keep going. Everybody that would message me would be like Doctor Sutton or Book Boss or whatever stupid mm-hmm. thing they would say. We love your presence on social media. We want you to do X, Y, Z, and 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 get all these cold messages of mm-hmm. just somebody thinking that I was something, and then and then too, you get all these people on social media now that are influencers and have thousands of followers, and they're eighteen years old, and nothing wrong with being eighteen, mm-hmm. but. What do you really know about right. life? Maybe mm-hmm. you do know about a skill because you can be 12 and be awesome at a skill. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not knocking age at all, but you don't have a lot of wisdom at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and you probably don't have a lot of life experience. And so mm-hmm. maybe maybe you are good at what you do, but it just doesn't carry the weight as a, mm-hmm. as a personal reputation. Um, so, and, and depending on what you want to do, like I enjoy public speaking. I've done some and... People cold reach out to me all the time because of my LinkedIn little videos I put on LinkedIn. Yeah. Hey, if your people want to reach out to me, look at me. LinkedIn. There you go. Paul underscore Reeser, I think, on LinkedIn. <laughs> um, you know, and they're like, oh, man, I like what you say about customer service. I like what you say. And my stuff's kind of silly, but it tries to make a point. Right. Um, I usually suck them in with an angry customer, and then I usually yeah. flip it back, and it's like, you know, about empathy. But that, if I was doing... If I was doing all in on speaking, um, a lot of because what you can build is credibility. Someone, everyone now looks you up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, it is important to have, I think, a personal brand to be uh, interacting on LinkedIn, to be interacting um, mostly LinkedIn for professional purposes, uh, because people are going to look you up. Right. I've got a friend that I've met at YouTube conventions, and. Um, I'm like, Vinay, he's from India. Uh huh. I said, you don't exist. I got, Well, I didn't say that to him. Per- <laughs> I'm like, the first time I met him, I'm like, God, this guy is so sharp. You know, he introduced me to so many folks, and he just he's a personal uh, branding expert. And I look him up, and I don't see him. I'm like, oh, I'm being scammed. <laughs> you know, this guy. So I start telling him, I'm like, well, what do you, how do you do what you do? He travels the world. Well, he's got rich parents. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Works. And they helped him do this, start this company, and he is doing all this online training, and he and he's created this company that helps with customer service experiences, and he's gone in person to all these places um, all over the world. And he does have this vast reservoir of knowledge, but he suffers from what most of us suffer from is imposter syndrome. Absolutely. And he's like, Even though I know all these things, even though I have visited these places, even though I have this reservoir of knowledge that I've written down and that I'm about to turn into classes and online training, I don't feel that I'm the guy that could really say it yet. And uh, he's been all over the world. I mean, when you're sitting with him in a meeting uh, or or any, any any group of folks, he can just preach customer service and gives you so many great ideas. So he's actually, he's like filling out his LinkedIn resume. Because he is who he says he is, but he was too shy to actually put anything on LinkedIn. And I'm like, I I could have very easily just shut off that wall thinking he's a no, you know, because a lot of people are scamming you. Oh, absolutely. But if you don't want to be thought of as a scammer, fill out your LinkedIn profile, put the places that you work, put, some, put a little bit of information on there, make a few posts. It's easy to do, and it does give you some credibility because everyone's going to look you up. Yeah, absolutely. It's mm-hmm. it's funny because you know I, I meet people all the time, people that I see patients when I'm doing home health physical therapy, and they say, oh, yeah, I know you. I saw you, a video of you on Facebook. And, and when, I, before, when I had my business before my PT clinic, I would do a Facebook video every single morning. Mm. And I would literally see people all the time be like, you're Facebook famous. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And it hasn't, hasn't done much for me, but, but they get to know you that way. They do. And, and they, they trust you. And, and they, they trust you. And so when you start giving advice, even though it's free. That's right. It's so much work. Yes. Uh, when they have a question about physical therapy, they're going to trust you. Yeah. I mean, I know a guy, Roger Wakefield. He is a, he is a plumber in Dallas. Regular guy, you know, just a blue collar guy. He was a good plumber, but struggling to make ends meet. Uh, and all of a sudden, he hooked up with some guys that helped him create a YouTube channel. Yeah. And his YouTube channel, all he does is he teaches people how to unclog drains, how to fix drain caps, right. how to fix these things. And you're like, well, that's kind of counterintuitive. If I show them what to do on YouTube, they're not going to call me. Wrong. No. <laughs> they're going to look up, when they look up how to replace a toilet, 
and you're the first one that pops up because you've got a lot of videos and you're kind of funny and you're trustworthy. <clears throat> one, they start to trust you and then they start to do it and they're like, oh, I can't fix the toilet. I'm going to call Roger. Yeah. Or they'll fix the easy things and they realize that they trust you and then when they do need something, you're the one they That's think right. of. So yeah. there's is, there is a tremendous advantage to personal branding, to, to giving, again, just you're, you're serving other people. Sure. <clears throat> it is hard. It, yeah, it's time consuming. It is hard. YouTube is an unforgiving, starving beast that you have to feed constantly. Yes. So I would say you don't necessarily have to be an influencer, but you do have to, you need to have a little bit of, at least fill out your LinkedIn profile, fill out your Facebook profile with positive, nice things. Yes. Uh, and, um, but your true personal brand is your character. Yeah. How do you live day in and day out all the time? Yeah, and and you know, just a little bit more advice. Keep all the stupid thoughts you have inside your head and don't. <laughs> well, post you don't them. want me. I can't no, give no, any thoughts. No, not then. you, me. Like if the I mean, can, the mean I, things. Like I can't let the stupid <laughs> thoughts out. I can't let anything. When I out. first got out of physical therapy school, I posted about working mm-hmm. somewhere. And because I hated working there when I was in college and I posted something stupid, like as a professional, a doctor of physical therapy, mm-hmm. and the owner of the company I was working for sent me a message mm-hmm. and said, hey. Uh, we probably don't appreciate that. And I, I mean, I felt like the biggest loser on the planet. Mm-hmm. And, and I actually called him and apologized profusely. Um, and that was a good life lesson for me at 27 to learn, hey, it's a, just keep your mouth shut. Not everybody needs to know everything you think. Um, that is. And I, so, wanna, I do want to drive that point home. One for, for younger people yeah. who don't want to hear this, but I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and then two for older people like, yeah. like you and I. Well, I'm much older. Um, a personal time just like you when I screwed up. Yeah. So one, um, if you're if you're involved in any kind of a national brand, Sherwin Williams, Sonic Drive-In, McDonald, anything, anything, they have people that are scouring the internet at all times. Anytime there's any tag with your name on it, you know they're gonna find it. Yep. And so my brother-in-law, who who <laughs> was for many years the the regional director for uh, Sherwin Williams, he would get these, you know, somebody. <laughs> Took a picture without their pants on, standing on a <laughs> paint can in the la- in the back of a you know, thing. and he's right. like, "Joe, Jimmy, <laughs> yeah. what do you do?" Oh, I just you know, I, you know, I mean, and that, you know, that, but extreme examples, of everything from just saying bad things about your company yeah. to, you know, taking a bath in the in the sink. You know, <laughs> those happen. Don't do, don't, don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hold, you know, understand that this stuff, even you can delete it, it never goes away. Yeah. It's out there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, I believe that, whatever, but it's my right, blah, blah. Personal thing. Before, before uh, social media was ever even a thing, uh, when I was running one little drive in, and there was a guy across in, in Shreveport running another drive in that was, that we had no ownership in. I owned the Bozier's. I, I didn't even own it at the time. I was managing. But I knew the guy. I known him for years. And he was a, He's an okay guy, but you know, he didn't run a great drive-in. Um, he, I get a call from someone that he had that that I was over at this Sonic and I got a horrible horrible experience. And I said, you know what? I hear it about that drive-in all the time. I'm sorry that happened. Why don't you just come over here and I will take care of you? This is my, you know, this is not that drive-in. This is this location. And they said, oh, thank you very much. They came over. I took care of it. Next day, I get a call. Paul, this is, I always say Jimmy. This is Jimmy. <laughs> I heard from somebody that you said you hear about complaints from me all the time. And I had I had to make a choice at that moment. Yes. Like, Do I go all in? Lie about it? Say, what? Or no, they misunderstood. Or no, that wasn't me. Or do I just own it? And at that moment, I said, I'm just going to own it. I said, Jimmy. I did say that, and I'm very sorry. I should not have said that. We're all on the same team, and I will never do that again. I'm sorry. Yeah. And what's he going to do? He's like, well, man, that ain't right. I said, I know it's not. I'm very, very sorry. I should not have said that. That was stupid of me, and I won't do it again. And I never did. Yeah. Never did again. Um, That's not helping anybody. No. You know? So I should I could have just told the person I'm so sorry that happened. Come to my drive-in, I'll fix it without throwing the other guy yes, under the bus. Absolutely, that's what I should would have done. been the same service. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I love that because when I worked, so I worked in Minden at um, one of the private PT clinics, and then mm-hmm. later I worked in Minden at the hospital. But 
So I think there's three or four PT clinics there now, physical therapy clinics. And people would ask, well, what do you know about the other clinic? I'd say, well, at the time I didn't know anybody there. I said, I, mm. I don't really know anybody there, but I'm sure they do a great job too because they're in yeah. a service profession. Mm -hmm. And thank God I had already made the stupid Facebook mistake earlier. So I knew better <laughs> and I was married and had a wife. And, and so I knew I had to take care of us, but there's no, there, there, <clears throat> there is competition in the world. Mm -hmm. But there's enough people for everybody to serve that you don't have mm -hmm. to be in strict competition and run. You don't have to run anybody down because yeah. there's people that's going to like your brand. There's people that's going to like my brand. Mm -hmm. So, well, they've already had the bad experience with that other business. Yes. Yeah. So if they come to you and you give them a good experience, they're coming back. That's a good experience. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So, what? Um. So not just in the context of business, because I know this. I've is, learned all these things from mistakes. Uh, yeah. I'm not telling you I'm perfect. No, I know you're not. I can tell you all my mistakes. <laughs> I got a lot. We don't have that much time, though. I was going to say, you don't, you don't have enough uh, tape in that camera. We don't have enough. My computer will die. But I know, so the premise behind Healthy SBC Podcast is to help people get healthy in Shreveport, Bossier City, mm. Benton, surrounding areas. Um, yeah. Part of that health is, is financial health. So in the in not just in the context of business, but how important is it to understand finances and managing your money? We're trying to get healthy in Shreveport Bossier as we're sitting in front of a five foot, <laughs> it's glorious, healthy. it's healthy picture of a <laughs> Chicago dog. It's a vegan. <laughs> uh, it's all beef. It's, it's all beef. beef yeah. <laughs> um, so healthy financially. Yeah. Um, that is, I mean, that's the number one struggle that people have. What's go, what's going to run you out of business? You're either going to give up. You're either going to run out of energy or run out of money. Yeah. What's going to? What are you going to fight about in your relationships? money mm -hmm. you know um what's going to get people in constant stress the most stressful thing oh and money mm -hmm. so uh you know you're talking about financial health to me it's all about um moderation moderation you know um if you don't have it don't spend it yeah and so that i mean the very absolute basics of, of financial literacy is if you don't have it, don't spend it. And the biggest problem people has is I don't have the money, but I want it. And yeah. other people have it, so I, sh I should get it. Yeah, I deserve it. You know, I deserve it. Yeah. And, um, and that's just, that's stupid. <laughs> Absolutely. That's going to wreck your life. Mm -hmm. I've had so many uh, managers that have wrecked their life financially. And that person that's got that stuff, they're probably wrecking their life too. Yeah. Um, uh, it doesn't matter if you're making uh, thirty thousand a year or three hundred thousand a year. People live paycheck to paycheck way too much. Yeah. And um, you know, in, in in one blurb of a of a statement, I mean, I'm very very fortunate. My wife and I were both just had a just fear and detestment toward owing money. And uh, she was great. She could make a bag of beans and a chicken last for the whole week, you know. Yeah. And literally, you know, we, we, we didn't have money. We didn't spend it. And I, I get myself in the, in the mindset of 50% of the world lives on less than $2 a day. And they don't live very well. Right. And they don't like it. Mm -hmm. But if they can survive on that, I've got to figure out how to survive on 30 50, 100, 300, you know, no matter what it is, you can survive. And I'm talking about, I know we don't want to just survive. Sure. So you survive and then you put a little money away. You learn about how to, you know, and that's, that's the bare minimum. Live on less than you make and put a little away. Because if you're living 100% paycheck to paycheck and you lose, I just, I just hit a curb the other night in my truck. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've priced Ford F-150 20-inch tires lately. Yeah, I have one. <laughs> They're expensive. They're expensive, you know. But thankfully, uh, well, I don't care. Yeah. I mean, you know. Uh, now, 20 years ago, I would have been, dead gum it. Yeah. So I would have maybe probably would have had to put it on a credit card. Yeah. And then I wouldn't have spent another dime on anything else until I paid that credit card off. Right. So... And I wouldn't have had a big truck. I didn't have a one hundred and fifty. I had a little GMC Sonoma with cheap tires. I could get yes. at Walmart for like eighty bucks. That's right. Um, so, you know, I mean, your question, I guess, was just how important is financial literacy? Is that what you told health, asked me? Health. Financial yeah. health. It's the most. Imp no, I mean, I hate to say the most important thing, but it's close. 
it it really is. I mean, you've got to have money to live. You got to have money to survive. You got to have money to excel. You have to have money to send your kids to school. Yeah. You have to have money um, to have a balanced life, to have a safe life. Yeah. And people are too much. They they believe that I'll never get there. And um, I am incredibly fortunate. Yeah. You know, and it's hard to look at me now and say, "Wow, you know, easy for you to say," but man. My dad asked me when I was in college, <laughs> and my wife was working as a nurse tech in nursing school, and I was working at a video store making $100 a week. He's like, how do you live on $100 a week? And this is, this is deep, man. I said, there's no way I could live on $100 a week, Pop, but I get by on 90 <laughs> I was like, what the heck does that mean? You know? Um... That's you know that, and I don't know if this is a, a spiritual thing. Yeah, I definitely don't want to. I definitely don't want to. You know, come across as holier than thou. But we began tithing at an early age. Yeah. And what that does is it makes you look at that money every week and say, okay, here's ten dollars for the church. Right. Now what are we going to do with ninety? Yeah. Well, here's the rent. Yeah. Well, now what are we going to do? You know, and. And then, for some reason, when we were completely out of money, and I'm like, oh my gosh, we're not going to make it, somebody would ask me to come video a wedding, yeah. and I'd make a little money. Yeah. And I was completely out of money, somebody would ask me to come paint their house, and I'd make a little money. Yeah. So it's not necessarily the money's just going to show up out of nowhere, no. <clears throat> but because we had no debt, I mean, I drove a... I'm just, I, and again, I, it's such a tough position when you, when, when you talk about money. Um, but, but what I knew, what worked for me, what worked for Stacy is we had no money. So we had no thing. <laughs> we lived on, we slept on her furniture that she got in high school that her parents were gracious enough to let us have her high school furniture. Yeah. And a TV that I got in 10th grade, you know, but for Christmas uh, that we had well into after we owned our first Sonic. Um, because the problem, the biggest problem people have, and I don't want to be preachy, but man, it, it is it is solvable. Sure it is. People Absolutely. don't think it's solvable. Yeah. And I don't want you to live on nothing forever, yeah. but I want you to live on less than you make. Yeah. And then you can always do better and better. Um, when you have an opportunity, if you have no money, you can't take that opportunity. That's 100%. When you have... Uh, an opportunity to go to another job, but you, but it's like that's my dream job, but it's fifteen percent less than I'm making right now. I can't live on that. Yeah, you're you're out of luck. Yeah. Well, I guess you're just got to stay where you hate. Yeah. You know, so you can live on less than you make, and it doesn't matter if it's not fair. Quit worrying about what's not fair. Start worrying about what is. Yeah. Life's not fair. Absolutely. You know, it's not fair. So what is? What is the rules? How do I win with these rules that are in front of me? Anyway, uh, it's doable, man. Yeah. You have to live on less than you make. And then when something horrible happens, I'm sorry, Dave Ramsey, you need to have a credit card. Yeah. So you can get a tire. Sure. If you're, I mean, like this is when I was in school and working two jobs and had no money. Um, then you Then you don't do anything else until you pay that credit card off again. Because people have got to understand what equity is. They've got to understand what compound interest is. They've got to understand. But when you're broke, living paycheck to paycheck, you can't put away 15% every no. month. No. But when you get a raise, Go. <laughs> start saving the raise. Yeah. But what we have is income creep, lifestyle creep. Sure. And um, people, if they make 10 they're like, if I only had an extra $500 a month, I would just be okay. And they make the extra 500 a month, and instead of paying off their note, they, oh, now I can get five hundred dollars worth of something else. Yeah, you know, and it's just, you know, and I'm, I'm not even going to be. I'm sorry if you feel that. I'm just saying to you. That's the truth. I want, I want people to do well. Yeah. When I bought the truck that I have, um, is when inflation hit the roof, and mm. and but my buddy was selling cars, and I said I want to spend this, you know, twenty thousand. He said mm. you really need to spend thirty five because I can get you a great. I was like I'm not spending mm. thirty five. I don't yeah. want a thirty five thousand dollar truck. Yeah, because I, I don't want to. I don't want all my money to go to where I'm driving. Yeah. Who, who cares? 
Nobody cares what I drive. That's right. I certainly don't care um, as long as it gets me there. So, so I don't want to be preaching, man. You're, and, and we're talking to a lot of 40 and 50 year old people on this yeah. podcast. Like you're preaching to the prior, but some of them aren't. No. If you're 50 years old and you haven't started putting money away, you better get busy. You better start putting a bunch back. You better start putting it away. It's not, I mean, it's best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today, right? Yeah. So now past, uh, past performance is no guarantee of future whatever. So if you lose all your money, and don't come to me, that's your fault. <laughs> but if you look up and you're 75 and you don't have any money in the bank, that's your fault. That's too. exactly that's exactly right. 100. So, there you go. Nice awesome. drop. Bam, drop it. All right. So now it's time for the SBC spotlight. Uh, <laughs> So today's SBC Spotlight is brought to you by Business Real, where anyone can start a business, not everybody should. All right. Hey, that's my website. That's your website. So businessreal.com, go to that. We're going to list that. Where do our listeners go to find out more about you and Business Real? <laughs> www.businessreal, R-E-A-L, real, like real business. Yeah. But it's also reels. Yeah, I know, love it. Because I have a YouTube videos there. Yeah. Awesome. Fun stuff. So if you want to kind of look at some things, it's, it's for... It kind of looks like this stuff is on the level of people that are interested in restaurants or interested in, in uh, um, a lot of it is, is customer-facing information. Sure. Very simple. But it's a good reminder for people that own a business, and I really hope that people will share it with their people that work for them. Um, like I have one, you know, this is what I did when a customer wanted to fight me. <laughs> and uh, I give this a, a silly one minute video about this guy that came in and he was mad at me because, you know, we didn't put pickles on his burger. Or we did put pickles on his burger. Well, the funny thing is, it's got hundreds and hundreds of comments across the three. You know, I've got it on TikTok and, and Instagram right. and YouTube. And most people think that I'm a horrible person for trying to take care of this guest because he was a jerk. And they're like, oh, you're. You're, you're taking his side against your employees. You're, you're uh, enabling Karens, which I hate that term, Karens. I have very good friends named Karen. They're incredibly <laughs> smart, sweet people. Yeah, absolutely. But the point is, you know, you're, you're enabling people to be hor- have horrible behavior. And I'm like, that's not what I'm about. What I'm about is making sure that my employees know, never fight with a guest. Mm-hmm. You're never going to win. No. And I promise you, I will, I'm going to show you by example. Even the worst example, I want a horrible example. I'm going to be nice to this guy. Yeah. And he left going, oh, I'm sorry about that. (laughs) So anyway, blah, blah. Look at these things as a great reminder. And then also, you know, share them with your employees. You know, I have how do restaurants really make money and 60 seconds on breaking down a a hundred dollars and the expenses on those things. People, all people can say in the comments is, uh, you don't pay your employees enough, you know? (laughs) Well, you know, I almost broke up with you as a friend, even though we haven't spoken in a, in a long time, um, because I saw your Chick Fil A video, and it's like, why well, wouldn't I want a Chick Fil A? I was like, Paul, I'm, dude, I got to have the Lord's chicken now. You can't be messing That's with right. that. But I watched it, and it was really good. It's like you can only have this business; you have to do these things. And so, five reasons I would yeah. never own a Chick Fil A. Yeah. People either love Chick Fil A, so yeah. they think I'm dissing Chick Fil A, and they're like, right. it wouldn't have you. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Or they hate Chick Fil A, and they're like, oh, you didn't list the number one reason. They're uh, homophobic. Yeah, right. You know, so it's like, it's fun, though, because when people start arguing, yeah. those videos blow up. Yeah. You, you probably just blew up this podcast with that one statement. So, uh, <laughs> thanks, man. I you better it. put that in the beginning, because <laughs> there's yeah. not too many people left now after That'll all be that the clip. I did about what? spending <laughs> That's right. About what, not spending money. What upcoming projects are you most excited about and things you're doing? Man... I mean, the, the the problem is to to get great a business, uh, you got to focus on it a hundred. And I'm just not willing to put in what it's taken, what it took me to do, what I know it takes right yeah. now. So I'm still playing around. Yeah. So what I do is, um, I got a we got a, a rent house in Athens, Georgia, where my kids live. So we're gonna go spend more time there. I'm still doing a lot more traveling, but I'm really excited about uh, business real. The YouTube videos that I'm continuing to make. I'm starting a newsletter that will be associated with Business Real. Um, I'm I'm excited about. I'm starting to get more involved with the uh, Louisiana Film Prize, which is something that I love. Wow. Film, yeah, you know all that stuff. So I'm getting to just taste. Like, I'm I'm in a very unique position. I mean, uh, I'm very thankful, thankful, thankful. It's because of my personal branding, though. That's 100%. It's your <laughs> reputation, sir. Uh, I love that. So I, I don't think I've ever said this on a podcast, but my roommate in PT school did theater in Monroe. And I always, like, I've wanted to do that ever since I've graduated PT school. Mm-hmm. I've never done it. I also want to be a public speaker and all, all that stuff because I love it. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, film stuff. I, I, I think it's, it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. And, you know, years ago, 
um, I had somebody teach me how to do a podcast. Literally, he put a PDF together, and, and mm-hmm. I messaged him last week, and I was like, Will, you've opened up the world to me yeah. by showing me how to start a podcast. Yeah. Uh, because I had a lady in Ruston tell me, because I was from Jonesboro, where my mom's from, mm-hmm. that I would never, nobody would ever take me seriously because of my accent. Nobody would ever think I was intelligent, and mm-hmm. I would never reach people. And so I've had, I've interviewed 300 people at this point and, That's right. and it's been amazing. And I don't know what influence or re- reach I have had, but I know That's my right. podcast has been listened to it on every continent. So, mm-hmm. I mean, and you build, okay. and you build a relationship yeah. with those people that you reached out yeah. to. So it's been fun. How did I introduce you to the guy downstairs at the office of the building manager? Hey, this is Jeremy. I said, this is Dr. Dr. Jeremy yeah. Sutton. Yeah. Dr. Sutton. Dr. PTs can't call themselves doctors in Louisiana, but I'm going to because I have the Oh, degree. really? Yeah, so I have yeah, to put PT a behind doctor it. I don't something. care. I'm still going to say it. I'm Dr. Jeremy. Who cares? Um, how can our listeners support your mission? Or you? Man, uh, I would love for people to, to go to my YouTube channel, which is Paul Reeser Business. That's the easiest way to find it. Just, if you put in Paul Reeser, it'll come up Paul Reiser, and you see the actor from Mad About You. Yeah. He's Stranger uh, Things now. And Stranger Things. <laughs> Uh, but you, you know, go to it, Paul Reeser Business, if you want to search me on um, on YouTube, and you know, check out a couple of videos and drop some comments and drop a like and, and say, Paul, this is great. Why don't you go check out this business or what? You know, people ask me interesting questions. They're like, Oh man, I'm about to take over a Popeyes. What rec- what would you? What information would you give me? My dad's about to lose his business. Well, it's it's a little weird what people ask you. Um, but yeah, please, if, if you would, the only thing that I, I'm interested in right now is for people to go check out the videos and make comments on them to help me improve the content. Wonderful. We can, we can definitely do that. We'll put all the links in there. And to, to go back to something we said, it has nothing to do with what you just said because mm-hmm. I'm a podcast host and why would I off talk about what you said? But there's a, there's a <laughs> website. It's, it's, a, I don't know if it's howrichamai.com or whatever, mm-hmm. but I'll put the uh, link in the show notes. And you can actually put in what you make a month. Mm-hmm. Or a year, and it shows you how much richer you are than the mm-hmm. most of the population in the world because you talked about two dollars a day. Mm-hmm. Go put that in there, and then just like go cry and shame later. Because I, I think like the top one percent of Americans is it's 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 up there now. It's like five hundred, five fifty. Yeah, to be in top one percent, which people think, oh, you're making a hundred million. I'm like, eh. yeah, but five hundred thousand. But, the, 000 is but a the, lot. World a, the world as a whole, but the world, if you make over make thirty thousand, probably yeah. you're in the top one percent of the oh, world. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely crazy. I, we did it in a church one day, and I was like, oh, oh. anyway. Okay, so it's time for Megaphone Minute. You get one minute to talk about whatever you want. You go. Oh, man. I've already been wearing you out for the... Um, I would just say the one thing to do to improve your own influence and to make the world a better place is to always have the goal of leaving every interaction with another person, having them feel better for having had that interaction. Yeah. You know, it's, it's too easy to go up to a person and either try to, you know, either dog them out. Like if you're in the fast food business, everybody thinks, well, this is the one guy that I can take out my frustration on. Don't do that. Uh, and, and if you're, or you might go see somebody and, and give them all your woes. Don't do that. If you, if a person asks you how you're doing, say terrific. Don't tell them if you're doing bad. They, they don't really want to know that. So if you want to influence people, be a person that people like to be around. And that will make the world a better place for the world and for you. Yes, wonderful. Paul, thank you so much for being on the show. It was awesome. (laughs) Thank you, Jeremy.